हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर एट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एनालिटिकल मेथड फॉर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ द रिजल्टेंट फोर्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट इक्लिब्रियम स्टैटिक इक्लिब्रियम डायनेमिक इक्लिब्रियम स्टैटिक इंडिटर्मिनेसी जनरल इक्वेशंस ऑफ इक्लिब्रियम एंड फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम सो लेट गेट स्टार्ट विद द टर्म इक्लिब्रियम अ पार्टिकल इज सेट टू बी इन इक्लिब्रियम इफ द नेट फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन दैट पार्टिकल इज जीरो इन अदर वर्ड्स वी कैन से दैट इफ द रिजल्टेंट ऑफ ऑल द फोर्सेज acting on a particle is zero then the particle is said to be in equilibrium such a set of forces whose resultant is zero are called equilibrium forces the force which brings all the forces in equilibrium is called an equilibrant so let's suppose there is a body acted upon by a number of forces if the net force acting on this body is equal to zero which means net force is equal to zero then our body will not move in any direction or we can say that the force experienced by this body is zero such set of forces whose resultant is zero means the net force is equal to zero are called equilibrium forces so these forces let us name these forces 1 2 3 and 4 then these set of forces are called equilibrium forces now the equilibrium is of two types static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium static equilibrium a system of particle is in static equilibrium when all the particles of the system are at rest and the total force on each particle is permanently zero let's take an example in this figure a wooden block is rested on a table the weight of the wooden block w is equal to mg exerted on this table in downward direction and the reaction to the weight of this wooden block on the table is given by fn normal force so this weight of the wood is equal to the normal force then in this case the wooden block will not move in any direction and it experienced an equilibrium and as it is not moving in any direction or we can say that that each particle of that wooden block is not moving in any direction so this is termed as static equilibrium dynamic equilibrium a system of particle is in dynamic equilibrium when all the particles of the system are in constant motion and their motion does not change with the time so there is a slight difference between the static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium as the names suggest static means at rest and dynamic means in motion but in both cases the body will experience the equilibrium which means the net force acting on that body will always be zero if the body is in equilibrium 
so in dynamic equilibrium we can take an example of a moving car now this car is moving with a constant velocity in this direction let the velocity of the car be 30 km per hour and this not going to be changed with the time so our car is moving with a constant velocity that is 30 km per hour now let's say the weight of the car acting downward that is w the reaction force exerted by the ground on the tires is n on each tire this is the force applied on the tires which let the car move in the forward direction and this is the force experienced by the car as a friction or we can say air friction in totality the force exerted on the vehicle by all its component is calculated as net f is equal to 0 which means if a car is moving with a speed of 30 km per hour it experienced a equilibrium a dynamic equilibrium the net resultant of the forces acting on that car will equal to 0 which means that this car will constantly move with the velocity v until unless any one of these forces exceeds its original value or any of the force disturbed the equilibrium of this moving car so this is an example of a dynamic equilibrium static indeterminacy static indeterminacy is a condition of a system when the static equilibrium equations are not sufficient for the determining the internal forces and reactions on that system to understand the concept of static indeterminacy let us understand first let us say this is the number of variables and number of equations if we have only one variable then only one equation is needed to solve the value of this variable if we have two variables then we need two num two equations to solve the value of x and y if we have three number of variables unknown variables then we need three equations to solve for the values of x y z similarly if we have four number of variables then four number of equations are required but if we have number of variables let us say 4 but number of equations given to us is 3 which means the unknown variable is greater than the equation then this is the case of static indeterminacy which means the given number of equations are not sufficient to solve for the four values of variables so similarly is the case of static indeterminacy where are the number of equations of equilibrium are not sufficient to solve for the number of unknown forces where the number of unknown forces are greater than number of equations of the equilibrium so this is static indeterminacy now the general equations of equilibrium basically we have divided it into two parts for two dimensional force system and for three dimensional force system in general we are going to consider only two dimensional force system and we are going to solve the numericals as per the two dimensional force system so in two dimensional force system 
the there are three equations of equilibrium which means a force of system which satisfy all these three equations are said to be in equilibrium if the force system does not satisfy any of this equation then the system is not in equilibrium so the first condition is summation of fx is equal to zero which means that summation of all the forces in horizontal direction must be equal to zero which means the net force in horizontal direction must be equal to zero similarly summation of forces in y direction must be equal to zero which means all the forces in vertical direction the resultant of all these forces must be equal to zero and the last one is the summation of movement of these forces at any point of the force system must be equal to zero so these are three equations which need to be satisfied to prove that the force system is in equilibrium if any of this equation not satisfied then the system is in non equilibrium situation as we talk about the three dimensional force system then summation fx equal to 0 summation fy equal to 0 and summation fz equal to 0 along with summation of mx equal to 0 summation of my equal to 0 and summation mz equal to 0 f is is here is a force net force in horizontal direction net force in vertical direction and net force in upward or downward direction which means in z axis is equal to 0 moment of this force is in x axis along any point is equal to 0 moment of this force is in y direction along any point must be equal to 0 and moment of all the forces in z direction at any point is equal to 0 so for three dimensional force system these six equations must be satisfied but in general we are going to use only two dimensional force system so we have to consider only three equations of equilibrium now comes free body diagram a diagram of the isolated element or a portion of the body along with the net effects of the system on it is called a free body diagram or it may be defined as a representation of an object with all the forces that act on it free body diagram are useful in solving the forces and deformation of the system so when we talk about a force of system acting on a body or a number of bodies then to calculate or to show the force exert on any of the body we have to isolate that body from the given system and show the forces exert on that body and that diagram is known as free body diagram let us take an example there is an electric lamp hanging at position 3 or we can say that at point c by the two ropes bc and ac now to draw the free body diagram of this electric lamp let us say this is an electric lamp at point c c point c weight of the electric lamp acting downward is 15 newton one force is this another force is 
this which we can name as TCA tension in the string along CA let us say this is A and one force acting in this direction let us say tension in the string along C B so this is the free body diagram of this electric lamp and after drawing the free body diagram we can now calculate the forces as per the general equations of equilibrium so a free body diagram is necessary or is very useful in solving the forces and deformation of the system that's all for today's lecture happy learning